All right, good start to the uh, Big 12 conference play uh, in our game down uh, or over in Stillwater. Uh, proud of our guys. A lot of positive takeaways from that game. Uh, obviously, the freshman quarterback, Isaac Wilson, did what we needed him to do, uh, took another step forward in his progression. And uh, for, you know, for him to go into, well, our team, but him playing quarterback into the number 14 ranked team in the country's stadium, hostile environment, and come away with a win, that was, uh, that was, that was great to see happen. And so very proud of him. Uh, proud of Makai Bernard for what he accomplished. Now, obviously, he doesn't accomplish that without some really good stuff going on up front with our offensive line. So that was big positive. Defense was completely smothering for about three and a half quarters till we had a, a little, a few breakdowns in the uh, towards the end of the game. Um, handled the, uh, you know, the heat conditions, which, you know, it was pretty hot. But I mean, you, know, you got to be able to play in whatever environment you're in. But but our guys did a good job uh, not letting that bother them. Didn't flinch. Didn't phase them. Um, yeah. So a lot of positive takeaways and and bottom line came out uh, with the win, one and zero. Uh, right where we wanted to be, obviously, in the, in the uh, after the first conference game. Uh, credit Oklahoma State there at the end. They, they were scrapping all the way to the very end and created a little drama for us at the end, which didn't need to happen, but give them credit for, for continuing to battle. I um, thought we were the more physical team. Uh, I think the rushing statistics are indicative of that and, and paint that picture. And so that was our kind of game. You know, rush for well over 200 yards. Uh, throw for a couple hundred, 450 plus total low, uh, held them under 300. Uh, didn't win the turnover margin. That's another uh, week where we, we dodged a bullet. That will catch up to us if we can't get that rectified. We got to get the, the turnover margin in our favor. And, and it starts with with uh, taking better care of the football on offense and, and creating more takeaways on defense. That's how you do it. It's pretty simple. Um, what else? Red zone production, not enough. We, we uh, Offensively, we left points out there again, and uh, that's going to catch up with us as well if we, if we don't get that uh, corrected and become better in the red zone. Um, let's see what else was positive in that game. Uh, oh, fourth down conversions. And that, that really, fourth down conversions are almost uh, tantamount to a takeaway. And so that, that balanced things out, being minus two in the in the turnover margin, but con but converting four out of five fourth downs, that uh, that compensates for that in a way. It's not exactly <laughs> the comp you know complete compensation, but it sure sure gives you uh, an opportunity to uh, extend drives. And, and like I said, instead of them getting the ball back, you retain possession. So that was a big deal for us, being 80% uh, in the conversion rate on fourth down. So uh, Arizona coming into our place uh, this weekend, night game. We all know that Rice Eccles is a, a real tough environment for opponents, especially at night. Um, you know, they, they got us pretty good last year, so we hope to to uh, play much better this year than we did last year. Um, no updates on any injuries, nothing was season ending uh, coming out of this past game, and so really nothing to uh, talk about there. Uh, I can say that Isaac and Cam was a right before kickoff decision. It was not, you know, we're, we're trying to be game, you know, gamesmanship or any of that stuff. It was, let's see how Cam uh, functions in pregame, and and then we decide who gives us the best chance to win. And so that was the decision made, literally, you know, 20, 25 minutes before pregame or before kickoff. So, okay, I know I got a guy over there who wants to ask some controversial question. So Justin, go ahead. Not this week. Not this week? Oh, you giving me a break? Nice. Okay, what is it? Lob a softball at me. He did? Good win the program. Wow. Thank you. That's that's rare coming out of your mouth. Yeah. He says, last year we struggled with the Arizona, Fafita, and McMullen quarterback receiver combo. How are you how are you game planning for this year to make a difference? Well, we gotta come up with something. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Fafita is a terrific quarterback. Uh, had a great game against us last year. The McMillan kid is a terrific receiver, um, leading the conference in yards per game in the top two or three or four in receptions per game. So he's a big target, big catch radius. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Devon Bailey. Uh, you know, six foot five and a couple hundred pounds, 210, and runs exceptionally well, great body control. He's a big time, big time receiver. So we got to have an answer and, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, like I said, play better than we did last year. Mm -hmm. Coach, 
Cal, can you tell us um, what Cam wasn't able to show you before kickoff? Not enough kickoff? velocity on the ball, plain and simple. Just not able to, to spin it like uh, like he needs to and wouldn't want. You know, just didn't have that zip on the ball. And, and uh, you know, we had structured things in practice during the week where there was a possibility that Isaac would be the starter. So we so we gave him the one reps a couple of the days. Uh, gave Cam some time off, time off later in the week to see if we can get those, you know, get it feeling better and and then test him pregame. That was the plan. So we followed the plan. There was nothing that surprised us and uh, made the decision we made and went with it. And then do you do, uh, to anticipate a similar plan this week? We'll see. Hopefully he's further ahead. And if so, then maybe that clears the pitcher up sooner. So can't give you an answer right now until, again, we see him throw. Kind of staying on that a little bit, with how well Isaac is playing, does that give you a little bit more leeway with that, or do you try to rush Cam back? How, how, does, how does that kind of work in, you, in your mindset? First of all, it's great to see Isaac's progression, but the bottom line is whichever quarterback gives us the best chance to win uh, is the one that will play. And obviously we're not going to put Cam out there if there's a health risk that that is uh, that the medical people haven't cleared. And so that uh, – but he was cleared for last week as far as just, yeah, you can use him and just up to you guys what, what decision you make. So, so we're not going to, uh, you know, I think we're past that point where, where uh, you know, you have to worry about re-injury or anything like that. So hopefully, knock on wood. Arizona's coming off a of bye week, but a couple weeks ago, they got pretty thoroughly beaten. What do you see on the film that you might be able to replicate? What were their problems in that game? Well, K-State ran the ball really effectively. It was 200 plus yards, and uh, I think Arizona only had 40, 50, 60 yards of rushing, and that's that's damaging. I mean, when you can rush for a bunch and, and not give up much in the run game, that, uh, that allows you to control the game a lot of the time, and that's exactly what K-State did. Uh, K-State did a really nice job defensively, mixing up uh, coverages, uh, bringing pressure, dropping eight, effective. They got real. They got good pressure with a three-man rush at times, and so they they had a good plan going in and slowed them down. But uh, to me, the big key was their ability to control the football through the run game. Dorian Singer's had a couple of good games. What have you liked about his play, and how valuable is it for Isaac to have that that reliable option? I've liked everything about Dorian's play and very valuable. And I think what you saw Saturday was more indicative of what we should be able to utilize him you know, week in and week out. That was his most, that was his most productive game of the season on Saturday. And uh, he's a complete player. He, he'll block for you. you know, he's, he's made some big blocks for us this year in the run game. He's tough. His hands are incredible. I mean, you saw some of the catches he made that, that come back where he scooped the ball up uh, literally inches from the turf, the one he pinned against his head. Uh, so he's he's a he's a big time talent, and I'm sure he'll be extra motivated this week because uh, you know he was on the Wildcats a couple years ago. What specifically have you liked about Isaac's progression? Everything, uh, his his confidence, uh, his command of the offense. Um, he's he's got I've said before he's got the it factor for a quarterback, and that's so critical. You got to have the the guy that has that that it factor, that leadership. Uh, and the players really sense it. They they love playing for him. I mean, they got a ton of confidence in him, and and uh, he's uh, he's fearless. He's he's an excellent runner. You saw him rip off that 40 plus yard run, which is huge at the time. And so we're we're real pleased with uh, really every aspect. Are you surprised how Makai Bernard is taking command of this running back room? That was your biggest concern coming into the year, and look look where you are now. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, he's right there at or near the top of the league in rushing. Um, He's been a workhorse for us, and that that was probably a little more than uh, he's. You know, we should uh, utilize him. He had 25 carries. I said in the week prior, you know, 15 to 20 is probably more a, a realistic figure for uh, for longevity's sake. But uh, when we needed him, he was there and answered the bell every single time. Made some huge runs. That run, that 60 plus yard run, was incredible. I mean, the the tackles that he broke and that move he put on the the one kid, and then the acceleration down the sideline. I mean, he's a he's a big time back. Kyle, you sort of mentioned heading into last week's game that you wanted to improve tackling and, and just key in more on, on the run game. How do you feel like you guys did in that avenue against Oklahoma State and, and so forth? We were just okay tackling. We weren't great. And uh, you know, we tried to be single-digit tackles, and we were 15 missed tackles. Single-digit missed tackles, and we were at 15. So above our quota, um, 
and so yeah, we had like a couple of plays where there was four on on one play, and so uh, it, it added up quick. But but I, that being said, I thought we did a nice job versus their run game. And uh, you know, the Gordon kid is a, a big time back, and we were able to keep him in check for the most part. And uh, that was a huge reason for the outcome is, is our run defense. Kyle, you've always said that around the four-week mark, somewhere around there, that you've, you you kind of know who your team is. Do you feel like you have an identity? Do you feel like who you are, and how do you assess it right now? Yeah, I think uh, four to six weeks. You know, four is the earliest you can, and, and six weeks is uh, probably your, by then you're definitely, you've got enough perspective based on other matchups and, and, and you know, teams you've played, and they're playing other teams, and you just get a better feel for it. Uh, I think this team is incredibly passionate and has a ton of energy, excellent leadership. Uh, love coaching them. I mean, it's uh, it's a pleasure to coach these guys. We got guys that uh, are so competitive and tough. You know, the two D tackles come to mind, Junior and Keanu, who are such great leaders for us. Um, Ke- uh, Kareni, when he's available, you know, and hopefully we get him back soon. Uh, of course, Cam, Isaac, when Cam's not in there. And so it's a team that, uh, appears to love football and love what they're doing and they love every aspect of it. They love to practice, love to get in the weight room. I mean, they're they're all in. So it's uh, it's one of those teams that, uh, you know, you really enjoy being around and it has, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of upside. Kind of piggybacking off of that, you know, when Cam is in, in under center, you know, your offensive identity is, is pass heavy and, and so forth. How do you, I guess, measure your offensive identity now that he hasn't been able to play a couple of games and and when he is able to come back in is there more things that you would like to be able to do since he has only played two games well Isaac pretty much has the the playbook available to him now so there's not really a lot as much difference as you think in in the uh, in the play calling or the uh, the game plan uh, based on who's a quarterback now there there was three weeks ago but this week it was it was very similar not exact, but very, very close to what Cam would have had at his disposal. Um, and so, uh, you know, going forward, uh, it's it's almost to the point now. In fact, I would say it is to the point where, regardless of who the quarterback is, it'll pretty much be the the same plan. And just whichever one's going to give us the best chance to win, that's the guy who runs it. It looked like the offensive line got some of the best push of the season so far, at least in the in the run game. What where are they strongest right now, and and, and maybe still working on some stuff. Uh, good question. I think uh, there was outstanding push, particularly early in the game. Now, we, we did wear out a little bit at the end, and we were more leaning on people than, than knocking people off the ball. But it was uh, it was like 140 degrees on, on the turf, and we it takes its toll. I mean, it, it, now, yeah, both teams are out there and, you know, so forth. But, uh, you know, those big offensive linemen, they seem to maybe dehydrate the quickest. But, but uh, I thought they controlled the line of scrimmage. We controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football, but I would say that our run blocking took the biggest step forward in that last game. Uh, pass protection was still decent. We gave up two sacks and uh, a couple hurries, but uh, I just think overall through four games, I believe they've taken a step forward each week. What are the biggest challenges going against Noah Fafita? Not a real dual threat guy, but very efficient, accurate. Yeah, he can run the ball if he wants to, doesn't really want to, would rather beat you with his arm, would rather stay in the pocket or, or uh, when he does escape, would rather throw than tuck it and, and run. But uh, you just got to try to keep uh, McMillan from going crazy. I mean, he you know if he gets double-digit catches and 200 yards, that's you know that's going to be a long night for us. And so we got to try to try to keep him to reasonable numbers. Uh, he's going to get his, but if it's if it's reasonable and if a feed are the same, and uh, again, you know, defense for us starts at the line of scrimmage versus the run. If we can if we can. Uh, be stout against the run that uh, really helps our cause elijah scooby davis played maybe his best game how encouraged have you been by by his progression very encouraged by both him and cam calhoun i think those guys are doing a great job they split time essentially uh at the corner spot opposite zamaya and uh that interception he made was impressive you know the first one he had in the season was kind of you know a gimme right to him but this one was uh, a lot. A lot of guys could make that play, adjust to the ball over your outside shoulder, and catch the back half of the football. And and he had he has a lot of receiver experience in high school, so I think you, you saw that right there. But but really proud of him and, and Cam, like I said, and Smith Snowden. He's playing exceptionally well too in the in the slot. And that's that's the most difficult assignment is is slot corner. You got uh, you got the most uh, challenging, not only physically but mentally. There's more to it. And, uh, and 
and then Zamaya is doing a good job. So I think we're pleased right now with the entire secondary. Um, did miss some tackles from the safety position, but you know everybody contributed a little bit to the missed tackles. But uh, so far through four games, I think we're holding the fort down. Going back to the offensive line, still seeing a lot of stack boxes, a lot of defenses that just have eight, nine-man guys in the box. What's been the biggest difference this year compared to last year in terms of your improvements in the run game? Uh, good question. Uh, you know, we we uh, are seeing loaded boxes, and, and for particularly, uh, you know, when we got the lead at uh, OK State the other day, and that's that led to the Brent Keithy touchdown because they were so packed in, you know. And so, but uh, I just think that our offensive line is playing efficiently and, and getting better each week. Um, those two young tackles are, are starting to come of age, and Spencer was further ahead than Caleb, uh, obviously, for with his experience last year. Michael Mokofisi is a road grader inside, and, and Tanoa Tungyai is playing his best football at the left guard spot. And Jaron Kump, Jaron Kump started out with some pancakes right out of the gate and was doing a good job. So I just say the overall physicality, but but uh, proud of him. We need to continue to get better and as the season goes. How come you do that nice, comfortable chair and everyone else sits in? It was the only comfortable chair, you know. It was okay. Uh, okay. Well, there's ladies in the room. Did you want that chair? No. Okay. All right. You're good. You're good. You're good. Final question. Final question. All right. What went wrong on the interceptions? Uh, let's see. Let me think. Um, well, uh, you know, the throw was a little off on, on the one. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to picture him exactly in my mind. Um, remind me exactly the... First one, the DB jumped the route. Or the safety jump. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah Dijon, I don't think he saw the safety coming. Yeah, the Dijon wheel route, he, he thought he had him, and I thought he had him. You know, and then the safety comes out of nowhere and <clears throat> overlaps over the top and, and made an outstanding play. That was a really – well, the throw, ideally in that situation, you'd want to throw away from the safety and fade him to the outside. But, again, I don't think he saw him or anticipated a, a center field safety being able to cover that much ground. And then the other one was, uh, was on the boundary. The half. Yeah, yeah, end of the half, and that was there was three turnovers within 40 seconds, I believe it was, or, or a minute. It was really crazy, but but uh, yeah, just uh, just didn't put the ball where it needed to be. I mean, I don't know what to say more than that. Okay, guys, let's have some fun. All right.